Joining us with more on the G8 and the rumblings of this second stimulus package, our friend Larry Lindsay, the president and CEO of the Lindsay Group and former National Economic Council director, uh, joins us from outside that nice uh, white picket fence. Larry, it's good to see you again. Good to see you again, um, Carl. Congratulations on the twins. Thank you very much, my man. Um, let me before we talk second stimulus. Let me let me back you up and just talk about the one that we already have in place. It is either not working, it's working, but it's uh, too soon to see the results, or it's just too soon to know either way. Do you have an answer to which it is? Well, well, I think it's doing exactly what everyone predicted it would do. You know, every major budget analyst in both parties, Congressional Budget Office said that this stimulus, the way it was constructed, wasn't timely, wasn't targeted on jobs, and therefore wasn't going to stimulate the economy. And lo and behold, it didn't. It was a political document. It was not a well-thought-out economic policy, and we're seeing the effects of that now. It's been, it's been four months, Larry. I mean, if this had happened during the Republicans' watch, they'd be arguing uh, it's just too soon to call the verdict. W well, um, it, of course, the verdict is always out. You never know what the future is going to hold. But as, uh, as Roger Altman said, uh, what happened was what people thought would happen. Uh, all the money was absorbed by state and local budgets. That's where the money went. It didn't go into helping uh, workers. It didn't go into helping employers. And so it was not focused where it should have been focused, which was on job creation. Uh, and I think that's what the problem is. And so I think it's working exactly the way one would expect it to work. You, 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 uh, I think it's working a little more slowly than, it, than even it was expected to work. But uh, it's, it, the money is going where they sent the money, which is to state and local governments who do what state and local governments always do with it, which is absorb it in their own budgets rather than use it to contribute to the economy. Right. Uh, you originally thought of the 800 or so, 787, that we'd get about $500 billion in value. And you now think that was too yeah. optimistic. Yeah, I think uh, the way uh, we, we had penciled in 500, I uh, gave it the benefit of the doubt. It looks like the number is going to be under 300, at least so far. As for, you know, paying 800 billion for a 300 billion dollar benefit uh, really wasn't smart uh, smart way to spend it. We're here with Jim Reynolds. Uh, the administration is going to have to find an another way to defend this package, are they not, over the next few weeks and months? Well, certainly they're going to have to address it. But, Larry, I, I have a question for you that, I, that I'd like to ask, and that is, obviously, when, when states get funds and they plug the operating budget, uh, that could be argued uh, el mitigates the need for laying off folks and maintaining a job. Do you not describe to that? And also, Larry, if you would comment, please, on... Would you have done anything differently in terms of, say, tax credits, the tax credit portion of this versus the stimulative portion? Yeah, I think what on uh, the tax credit portion, what uh, what I'd suggested back in January. By the way, I like the size of it, and the administration used me as a supporter of the uh, size of the package back in January. Um, I think what we should have done is have the payroll tax. We could have cut it in half for two years for the same amount of money. For a $50,000 worker, that would have meant $1,500 in their pocket, not $450. And in addition, the employer would have gotten $1,500 as well to help keep the worker uh, working. I think that was a much better way to use this amount of money. I think it would have helped on the employment side. It would have cushioned the blow on the household balance sheet and also would have helped uh, corporate cash flow as well, business cash flow. I think that's where the problem is. That, that's really what grows the economy. Uh, that's what I think stimulus is supposed to be about. Instead, I think the state and local governments are probably the most recidivist of all the places you can send the money. So, Larry, when, when Laura Tyson says we need another one, uh, or when Governor Rendell comes on our program, as he did yesterday, and says we could use another $200 billion, but this time really, really targeted, um, are, they, are, are they sending real trial balloons, or is all that talk overdone? Well, I think it's overdone. I don't think politically it has any chance in Congress. I don't think the administration really wants to propose another one because doing so would basically admit that the first one failed. And uh, so I think uh, we're, we're going to not use one. If I could just back away from the politics, though, because we borrowed so much money, $800 billion to get $300 billion of benefit, if you go out with another stimulus package right now, it's really going to shock the bond market. Hmm. I think the federal government is already absorbing most of the free savings in the, in the society. And the only way we're going to get more borrowing is to actually crowd out private activity. So I'm not even sure at this point that a second stimulus would be economically beneficial, 
even if it was well targeted. Yeah. Let's talk about Bernanke for a second. Better, better to get it right the first time. <laughs> that, one would argue that. Um, the journal weighs in on Bernanke this morning, says that 43 of 46 private sector economists uh, endorse his reappointment. In trade, the online uh, betting site gives him 60% odds on getting another tour of duty. Is he going to get one, or are these, uh, is floating Janet Yellen's name, Alan Blinder's name, is that all for real? Well, uh, make me 44 out of 47. Right. Obviously, he should be reappointed. He's done a great job. Um, I think it's a very difficult call for the administration. I think they'll probably make it in the fall. Uh, good government would suggest that they reappoint him. But then again, um, you know, they, they do have to make a, a political call here as well. And I wouldn't want to predict that one. Larry, when you look at some of the other names that are they're being tossed about, Carl just mentioned Yellen, uh, Blinder, some of these people who are being mentioned. But w what about Larry Summers? W what do you think about uh, the job that he might do in that position? Well, I served w on the Federal Reserve Board right. with, uh, with both uh, Alan and Janet. They're both fine people. Uh, they'd be fine chairmen. I've known Larry Summers. We were in graduate school together. I've known him for... I don't even want to do the math how many years. <laughs> um, and any of them would be a very, very fine uh, uh, chairman. But I think in this situation, you've got a, uh, a chairman in place who has done a fine job, who's really learned a lot, as anyone would in that kind of situation. This is an unprecedented situation. And he has a knowledge base now that's really irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be foolish uh, for them not to reappoint him. But again, it's a political call. I remember late last year when you told us that autos were going to be the next really big problem. You pointed this out to us on the show before anyone else did, that there would be this uh, crunch with consumer credit. People wouldn't be able to get auto loans. Do you see any end in sight? Is there going to be a turn uh, for all the troubles that have hit that industry? Well, I think uh, for probably another year or so, uh, we're probably going to see autos bounce along about where they are now. Uh, I think normal for America would be about 14 million units. We had about three years of 17 million units. So we got to run below 14 for a while in order to, to work off the excess supply. I think ultimately the credit problem will be solved. Uh, it is not solved now. Uh, it, the paper is moving, but when you actually go into an auto showroom, if you don't have very good credit, uh, you're not going to get an auto loan, and that's true across the board. So I think uh, the auto industry is going to be in rough shape uh, for a while. Larry, before we let you go, you're, you are catching us on the, on the beginning uh, of earnings season, and people are going to be looking to these companies to figure out whether or not we're going to see some real end demand uh, created as uh, the inventory story passes us by. Is that going to happen in the second half? Well, I don't think we're going to see end demand. The big problem that the economy is going to have is that third quarter personal income, disposable personal income, is going to be about $100 billion below what it was in the second quarter. Uh, in addition, households have to save more. If you're getting less income and you probably want to increase your savings, it doesn't look too good for consumption. So we may get an inventory bounce, but I don't think uh, we're going to have a surge in, in growth in the second half of the year. Uh, I wouldn't see one until the middle of 2010, probably, when household income is back up to the level it should be and when households have repaired their balance sheets. Right. Larry, uh, good to talk to you. Uh, it looks gorgeous there in yeah. Sand Fiddler, uh, Virginia. It's very comfortable. We should yeah, do the show that. from there. <laughs> Next time, go to Larry. Not that we're asking for an invitation it, or anything, no, but no. hint, hint. It, well, you, you, you guys are invited. It's a tough life, but someone's got to do yes. it. Yes. <laughs> it's summer. Uh, Larry, we'll talk to you later. Thanks again. Thanks a lot.